like Matt, let's just start right over here for them. Um, good offensive rebound to start the game, a lot of second chance points for you guys got you started. What do you attribute to that, and what, how do you attribute Illinois coming back in the game and, and making it tough? Yeah, well, I thought, you know, going into the Arizona game, going into this game, both dominant rebounding teams, we responded in those areas. I know they obviously got some offensive rebounds too, but we had 18 and they had 12, and we got rebounded by 15. So I thought we were great in that area. They still had their moments where they got tip dunks and kept balls alive, but our guys are really focused there. Um, I thought we were really good defending one of their teams, but the other team we weren't. So if you look, you know, when they had size in the game and they didn't go to their, I just call their lineup when they're skilled with Hawkins and Gurrier at the 5 4, their smaller lineup. So when they went small right there, we didn't have the discipline that we needed. We fouled too much. Um, you know, we jumped up on our closeouts, left our feet too much. But with all that being said, like, like Marcus, the, the mask is a hell of a player. Like he is a really good player. Gurrier, Hawkins, you know, Luke Goody was fabulous. Um, I love Ty Rogers. We tried to get Ty Rogers. He's a hard charging dude. He's about winning. Um, on down the line, you know, they, they, they have a good basketball team. Harmon, you know, didn't get going, only hit one three in this game, but he's the one that's got a little bit more minutes uh, with Terrence Shannon being out. Yeah, and, and you know, he stepped up and made some threes and gives them more skill and athleticism. And, um, I like their team, and uh, like I said, I thought our guys did a really good job defending them when they had that group in there. When they didn't, you know, I thought Illinois oh, got the best of us. Matt, uh, Trey spends a lot of time, obviously, in the shadow of Zach Eadie. Tonight really stepped up. He's been playing really well the last, you know, most of the season. Right. It, how much was this an example of just how good he is as a player? Yeah, just, you know, his ability to be around the rim. You know, Zach gets so much attention a lot of times in the way the game is played now that you you know you stay spaced and you let Zach just kind of maneuver down there and when we play different lineups um, like with Mason in the game we, we do that but when him and Caleb are in the game at the four you know we really you know try to get them around the rim more get more rebounds get more post ups and just try to hold the second biggest guy on the court <coughs> accountable a lot of people want to double with size because you know, that's the best way to get a trap and make it hard to pass. Zach's so big that at times it just doesn't bother him. So now he gets those spray out threes or he gets those dives there. But I just thought Trey was active. Um, the way he played tonight, that's the way he played the whole summer. You know, that's how he kind of got himself in this position. You don't see it as much because he doesn't play heavy minutes all the time, even though he starts. And then, you know, when Braden's got it rolling or Zach's got it rolling, sometimes you don't get the ball as much. Um, and rightfully so, but uh, I thought he was fabulous tonight. And if you, you want to grab an individual, you know, he's probably the difference for us. So you said keep Zach out there at the end of the first half. What was the thought process behind that? When Zach was out in the first half? Yeah, the rest of the half. Yeah, he had two fouls. So I didn't, I didn't play him there. I, I wanted to start the second half with, with him having two fouls. I didn't want him to get that third. And then obviously he gets the third and the fourth um, in that second half. But the other thing is, so when you get to that two fouls, some people just have like a rule and they just stay with their rule. You get two fouls, you're not going to play. Or some, some coaches will ignore it totally. And they'll just say, you know, you're just going to play on. I just kind of go time and score. We, we, uh, we were positive when he was out of the game in the first half. So we played well. And so we, you know, either kept the lead or extended the lead. So like right there, like, you know, you're, you're just securing your investment and you're keeping him on the bench right there. So now he's ready. And, um, so we have him at the end of the game. Then when they go small, that really puts us in a bind. That, that, that puts us in a bind. Now they're in a big they're in a big bind on the other end too, so it can, it can flip on you. But when people are coming from behind, um, doesn't always feel that way. Yeah, and, and then that um, second, um, you know, once it did come out and they, you guys extended the lead, was that the best or, or you know some of the best basketball you've seen your team play in that kind of smaller lineup without Zach? Yeah, we played well. We played well with him, and we played you know well without him in that stretch there. Um, we had some moments there to where we were small and we matched up to them and they got the best of us in the second half. I thought their offense was definitely better than our defense in that second half when they were smaller. And so you know, there's no doubt, you know, when we go to Champaign, we're going to see a lot of that. Um, but we also got to be able to flip it on the other end when, you know, you know, he's down there. But no, I thought our guys did some good things. I just didn't think we were very fundamentally sound and I thought we didn't have the discipline on the defensive end in the second half at times. 
obviously stuff happens in terms of the two untimely one and ones. Yes, but anything at the end of the game that you wanted to see your team be better in close game a little bit stronger head off that run? Yeah, I didn't see um, the flagrant foul. Like so, I, I saw bodies go, but it was you know sixty feet away from me. So I, I haven't seen that yet. So obviously we just foul too much. Like Luke Goody gets a rebound, and two of our guards sandwich him and just fouling on the baseline. He just handy points. Then they go and they, they, they play dribble down basketball. And then we, we had a guy just, you know, reach a couple times. And right there's just six points you're handing him. And, you know, and, and Damask proves that he can make tough shots and get to the rim and make plays. But still, make somebody make plays. Like, don't let them get free throws and, and be able to do that. So just kind of that lack of discipline, you know, on the defensive end. We, we, we got to learn to, you know, play a lot smarter than that. And they just kept kind of creeping back in. But a lot of our guys did a good job. We handled the basketball. Handled the press. We made our free throws. You know, we shot 80% from the line, so I thought that was good. Now you've talked a lot this year about buying in, and when these guys go to the locker room, they see the words play hard up there. And I think back yeah. to when Zach's out of the game there, you get two tip out offensive boards that leads to an open layup for Lance. Yeah. Get back on D, get a stop, and they get a transition three from Cam. Yeah. How big of a momentum swing was that moment with that lineup on the floor? Yeah, that was huge. You know, to, to get that kind of tap back hustle play for a layup and then push in transition. And that was something we talked about with them. Like everybody crashes the glass. So we thought if we could get rebounds, we could outlet it to Braden and really push it. We had a couple passes there in transition that we just got to, you know, keep it simple. But that, that stretch right there was huge for us and huge for our confidence. Matt, you did this with Travion and Zach a couple years ago, just looking at the production out of your center position mm -hmm. in 40 minutes. Are you getting kind of similar numbers from your four spot now with Mason and Trey? Yeah, I mean, both of those guys, you know, Mason Gill has had three different injuries from the <laughs> Maryland game. How do you get three injuries? Got a black eye, uh, sprained his wrist or his thumb or something, and then um, sprained his big toe. And so he didn't he didn't practice yesterday, and um, I, I thought he gave an unbelievable effort. Yeah, I thought, his head, his head, like, did huh? He, did he hit his head on that? Rebound? He could have. Yeah. <laughs> so... But like, man, he was hurting, and uh, you know, he went out there and laid it on the line. And he's played well against Illinois through the years. And you know, you, you never, you never doubt, you know, him being on board and trying to do little things to help us win. But um, yeah, we're, we're getting you know great production, and that's what we got to keep getting, you know, from those guys. That really puts them in a bind. You know, they they're they're coming back, and Trey Coffin just. You know, shoots that three like he's Ray Allen. Like I was like, holy shit! Like, okay, he went in. Like, but he he works, man. That wasn't magic tonight. Like he he he's really worked on his free throws. He's worked on his shot. He's worked on his game. He's he's put a lot of time in. You know, just like Mace. Mace puts a lot of time into his game. So I'm happy for those guys. Right here, Kyle. Matt, the flagrant on Lance. Kind of, what did you see, and what was explained to you? I saw the end of it, so I didn't see the actual. I didn't even know it was a block out. You know, it started with the block out. So they explained it that he blocked out. And the one thing that you got to do in your block outs when somebody's coming or somebody is right there is you got to jump. So, like now, the offensive guy jumps and you keep coming. It's an automatic foul. But that's exactly what happened. That's how it got explained to me. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't see it. Uh, but it was a, you know, big momentum, right? You know, they, they hit the two free throws, uh, they get the ball back. So. Um, I don't remember what happened right there when they got the ball back. They scored. Traveled, yeah. traveled. traveled. beautiful. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's – it was a big play. It was a big play. The travel's probably a bigger play, right? Because now they hit a three right there. Like, we're up against it. They, they had to get into a possession game a lot earlier than they did. Right. You know. Hey, Matt. Uh, talk about Zach. Here's the guy, reigning player of the year, cheering on his teammates. I mean, he's so excited for his teammates. Unselfishness on the guy. What, what do you say about that guy in the program? You know, cheering on everybody else on the team. Yeah. You know, he's he's been great. Like he doesn't have, you know, the crap that comes with the highly recruited guy. You know, he just doesn't. Like you know, he's very humble. He's very selfless. Um, he's a willing passer. You see when they come in there, like he gets Lance that three. He gets trailing. You know, you know, it, like you get somebody that averages whatever the hell he averages. You know, twenty two and twelve, and they get ten and fifteen. And they're hanging their head like, you know, that's the last thing he would do. You know, Robbie Hummel was that way for us. And he'd get four points in a game. And he's all conference. And, and it wouldn't bother him. He just, you know, it's about winning. And Zach's about winning. But, like, you know, for him to get 1,000 rebounds in his career, and he averaged three points in his last year of high school. 
You know, he got a thousand rebounds. Only second player in the history of Purdue basketball behind the great Joe Barry Carroll. He's only the 17th in the history of the Big Ten. So it's um, it's pretty cool. He deserves everything that comes his way. Casey Lester. Matt, Braden had, you know, 10 points early, no turnovers in the first half. It just seems that turnovers kind of come in short spurts. Right. What did you see in the second half? And what, yeah. What do you attribute that to? You know, like I talked about the transition play. Like that was just a, a pass that, you know, he, did, he doesn't put, you know, on the money there. And um, then he, other night he jumped in the air a couple times. He's done a really good job of staying away from it. Um, and, and had a couple turnovers against Maryland. We really talked about it. And when he, you know, he stayed on two feet or kept his dribble alive, you know, good things happen. But then he jumps in the air on the other one right there. Just has to, you know, we ask a lot of him, but he just has to stay, you know, with it. You know, when he gets fatigued, he's got to be more simple um, because he needs probably a little bit more of a break. Um, but sometimes we don't have time for that break, you know. And, uh, but no, he's great. You know, I, would, I wouldn't trade him for anybody in the country. He's done a lot for our program. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Matt.